Hi friends, uh, now we are in the fourth week of our course on risk-based engineering and uh, this has been sponsored by uh, NPTEL, uh, National Program on uh, Technology and Handbag Learning uh, through IIT network. And I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde. Uh, in previous lecture, you saw that uh, system reliability uh, uh, is the topic that we have started. And uh, in previous lecture, we studied the series system and its a background of uh, uh, reliability block diagram. Uh, we continue with this and now in this lecture, we'll have one parallel system uh, modeling and analysis uh, that is uh, reliability block diagram for parallel system. Uh, and then uh, RDB is considered as a uh, you know, redundancy modeling technique actually. So uh, that is captured by parallel system. And here uh, we have one more uh, approach is called K out of N approach. That means if the system uh, will survive, if there are uh, K out of N component or vice versa, system will fail uh, K out of N uh, number of uh, parallel components uh, if they fail, you know. So, and then of course, uh, uh, RDB uh, extension in terms of uh, mix uh, redundancy and all that, that also will touch upon. Okay. So let us uh, start with the reliability mo uh, modeling for the parallel systems. Uh, this uh, figure I have been considering, now we can see here that uh, in the fire water injection thing, there were two walls, P1, uh, two pumps, P1 and P2. You can see the actual configuration is uh, they are in parallel and it's uh, uh, RDB also uh, that is reliability block diagram also shows uh, them in parallel, okay. So P1 and P2 then, sorry, this is IP that is input and uh, this is the reliability block diagram. But let us, under, let us again, uh, I am trying to reaffirm this uh, concept that parallel or series, uh, sometimes the changing the failure criteria will change, uh, change the um, com component or uh, RDB structure also. So since we are considering Key, the failure criteria is any one of the pump uh, fails, system doesn't fail. If both the pumps fail, then it is a failure of injection water uh, through these two pumps and that is the failure criteria. Um, now, just I'll touch upon this aspect. Suppose if the failure criteria or failure mode is something else, then probably things uh, will be different. I'll just touch upon and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll address, or not in terms of pump, pump but uh, through the example of wall, we might touch upon this. So let, let us take the things. Uh, now how the model will look like? So system reliability is nothing but either pump one operates or pump two operates or both the pumps keep operating, okay? so. So, so this is the combination we have here. Uh, system reliability is defined by R1 T plus R2 T plus R1 into R2 T, okay. So uh, we assume that data follows exponential distribution because exponential distribution is simpler distribution. If, if we take other distribution like Weibull or any log normal or normal distribution, of course, uh, now, normal distribution may not call for, for here because the characteristic of the uh, property uh, property of the uh, our components and it's a failure characteristic they are different actually. So let us try to give the uh, system reliability uh, equation for parallel thing. So if lambda one is the failure rate of pump one, lambda two is the failure rate for pump two, then the equation goes like this, and of course t is the mission time. Um, uh, uh, these terms are having usual meaning but the way we consider it in our reliability block diagram for series system. So uh, this is the usual way of looking, looking for parallel system. However, in practice, this model may provide an optimistic result. I told you initially. So because due to the common cause. But all of our literature, we have to be very careful when we use the reliability block diagram and when we do not uh, in, uh, include common cause failure. Uh, uh, probably so so uh, our reliability block diagram will be more complete if i induce along with the uh, parallel configuration one common cause component why 
we will see how it impacts the uh, output of the analysis actually you know so uh, any redundant system can have redundant component to realize higher reliability or lower um, this is a parallel system in parallel systems there could be k out of n then there could be standby redundancy hot standby there are many things but let us not go into that because we will get unnecessarily confused so let us take a simple example that means parallel system uh, all the system uh, all the parallel component operates if one the system will not fail till the last component keep operating that means each component in parallel system is able to meet the success criteria of the system okay <clears throat> so uh, we have this now um, this is the redundancy that we are talking about. It is called parallel redundancy. Um, uh, but here, uh, we have not taken into account the, again, as I said, uh, the power supply failure and all those things. And, but they are basically, somewhere they are common to both. So what happens by considering the common cause failure, uh, we are apportioning those failure also. So uh, this is the significance of common cause failure we have here. Now let us uh, see how we can demonstrate the impact of this, you know. So, uh, so let us say assume that we are uh, uh, working for reliability, we are, but we are going to the failure domain also, okay. So uh, the pump failure probability, let us say, if you have considered as 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 and T that is uh, 50 hours mission we have taken, that means pump should operate for 50 hours. Um, uh, again, we say that exponential data it is following. Each pump reliability is given as uh, RP, P means pump, uh, is exponential minus PT. And then finally, we get this one uh, exponential uh, 2 into 10 to 3 into 50 uh, is the pump uh, reliability. So how I'll, I'll estimate here very failure probability 1 minus uh, reliability, uh, 1 minus reliability is equal to pump failure probability, which is no, nothing but 0.1, okay. So having seen, uh, seen this, uh, now let us try to see how we impact the, uh, uh, the, the block diagram which is there without common cause failure and with common cause failure. Let us say in the first estimation, we have not taken into uh, account the failure probability. So failure probability of pump 1, pump 2, that is 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 multiplied. So we will get 1 into the minus 2, okay. So this is the system failure probability without any common cause failure consideration. The common cause failure of a pump is work out. Um, the detailed techniques of common cause failure uh, modeling we will learn as part of risk assessment. But here, simple model I am uh, using here, that is called beta model. Beta mo model means, uh, it says that how many uh, fraction of events uh, were, were uh, common cause event among the total event. Let us say uh, 10 event, 100 events have occurred and there are only 10 common cause failure events. Of course, common cause failure is a very rare event. But conservatively, in uh, especially during the design stage of the plant, uh, we consider a value of uh, 0 0.1 for the common cause failure because as the plant develops, we have more insight into the system operation, and then uh, it is uh, the common cause failure contribution is brought down uh, depending on the, uh, the data which is coming in. But here, let us see understand that uh, 10 failure, uh, that is 0 0.1 uh, fraction, is common cause failure event. Uh, so. Uh, what we have is uh, com common cause failure, uh, we had independent failure, this estimate was there for independent component failure and now common cause uh, uh, 0.1 is there. So uh, for pump, common cause failure is 0.1, okay. So now the when, when I take with the common cause failure, uh, so 0.1 of, now my each pump uh, pump failure probability was 0 0.1, let us say, and common cause is also 0 0.1. So, 0 0.01 is the contribution of common cause failure, that is 1 into 10 to the power minus 2. Now, pump injection system failure probability uh, is equal to pump independent failure and pump common cause failure. So, you, you see here, 
to, so total failure probability will be this equation will be uh, giving the total failure probability and uh, that is 1 into 10 is minus 2 well, incidentally both the figures are same so please don't get confused one is coming from independent failure other is common cause contribution of the from the individual pumps so it becomes 2 into 10 is minus 2 can you imagine the indi uh, independent failure alone gives a figure and then along with the common cause failure the, there is a factor of 2 the probability increases with a factor of 2 that means had I gone with this estimated, I would have been very optimistic about my system performance. While what I am saying, saying here is, of course, uh, there can be a debate on higher common cause failure value. Or the point here is, let us not ignore the common cause contribution. Okay? And the biggest thing, even though we are talking common cause, common cause, it is not that plants are designed without considering common, common cause failure. Uh, the common cause failure mechanism, if not all, most of the failures are well defined and that's why the component location that is independent location barrier and then uh, heights and there are so many factors uh, different power supply for two uh, the, they are there in place but here uh, we are going for the understanding of common cause failure so the impact we are trying to for the sake of completeness we are discussing it here i think in one of the slides we'll discuss how the plants are made uh, you know, uh, plants are having defenses against common cause failure. That, that itself is a uh, separate subject actually. And uh, I would like to discuss that thing. So let us, uh, let us go to the next slide now. You have seen the impact. Now, one point I was trying to tell you that uh, um, generally we said the uh, reliability block diagram configuration uh, and uh, uh, you know, component configuration, they matches. So here you can see there that the the wall v1 and v2 it is connected in series but i'll show you how they they become important depending on the consideration of uh, uh, failure criteria the parallel configuration for all the component operates and provides some need reliability assurance of the mission the system's state is defined a success till last component fail. So what we are trying to say is if the failure criteria for the uh, or the success criteria for the wall is closer of both the walls, closer of both the walls. So the same uh, uh, the thing will look different actually, you know, you know. So let us go to the next slide. So wall V1 and V2 become redundant because we are, we, are, we are considering the wall isolation, wall isolation. That means now the failure criteria is not injection. Failure criteria is ki, uh, one of the wall, uh, one of the component should be sufficient to meet the mission. Suppose there is a water supply line and in, in that line there are two walls. And now suppose, uh, suppose leakages occur in the, the down, downstream side. So now, closing of any wall, which we have considered in series, uh, will be sufficient. It will isolate. So lot of resources have been saved uh, due to uh, due to leakages downstream. And if even if one wall, which is connected in series, if it closes, uh, our criteria is met actually. You know. So th then what will happen is the same wall which are connected in series. Can in reliability block diagram will be represented as parallel because one wall failure meets the mission actually you know that is blocking the line. So this is how the actual component, component configuration and the reliability block diagram may, may differ depending on the what you have failure criteria or what you have success criteria. Okay? So this is in nutshell we have presented here. Now we have this uh, complex series configuration. So you can see here there is nothing much to uh, emphasize here. Only thing is um, these two train, I will call train A. Let us say there are two injection uh, trains uh, for any safety purpose. Now they have a component connected in series like this is pump, this is wall, this is something rupture disc, this is again another uh, component. So this is one train. And this is another train, similar components, uh, pump, wall, the, again, the, uh, let us say, uh, heat exchanger here and all that. 
So these two trains are meeting some purpose of uh, ensuring cooling. Now here redundancy is there at the train level, train 1 and this is train 2. So not at component level, components are in connected in series. So um, uh, in, uh, in many practical application, uh, this is unavoidable because there is not only function of opening or closing, but there is a cooling function, there are so many, so there will be n number of components involved, they are connected in series. So, uh, a train system is used, instead of individual component level redundancy, the train uh, redundancy is used and here is the output. Finally, if I add all the component uh, uh, failure rate and uh, give a uh, failure equation and give a failure equation here, we will see a block and B, B block will be redundant. A block will call A train and B block will call B train. Now uh, it can be a home exercise that route, write down the reliability equation for uh, this particular mixed configuration we will we'll say. Okay? Uh, now a new type of redundancy uh, we, we are discussing here and this redundancy is called k out of n system redundancy. What I will say, there are n number of options or redundancies are available to us and for the success, we want only k number of uh, redundant component to, uh, to, uh, to work successfully or k number of component fail, then system will be called as fail. It depends whether you are dealing in, uh, whether you are dealing in failure domain or um, success domain. So I am giving a simple example because these type of modeling techniques are very critical. Series parallel configuration may not or will, will not give any answer. So uh, let us say take the example of one nuclear plant, nuclear reactor uh, in which uh, is, this is a plan view, you know. So uh, it has got the seven shutdown devices. Seven, uh, these are the seven shutdown devices what we see here and they are hanging uh, from rope and connected to a drive mechanism on top. Uh, so uh, their configuration or their, their arrangement is shown in the plan over here how they are uh, how they have been they have been organized here and finally what happens is these shutdown devices they remain parked uh, and this is the reactor. So this is the re reactor and this is the reactor core, this is the fuel here. So when reactor operates or reactor operates, these seven devices, they remain parked up and they are, their drive mechanism is connected to their control system. So as long as situation is uh, normal, these devices will remain parked here. The moment there is any deviation in the plant or there is any warning in the plant, then these devices all will fall in the reactor core and it will shut down the reactor. So what you, what you see here is a bunch, it, it is in uh, same set of rod have been shown in the fall down. So uh, this is the reactor shutdown configuration and the nuclear chain reaction goes on here. So once the devices are dropped, then the chain reaction stop, heat production stops, plant come to shutdown state. Now for this configuration, uh, we, ne we need to have a uh, you can say excess redundancies are provided, you know. So um, let us say if two device uh, dropping, minimum two devices should drop to successfully shut down the plant. You see seven are there, even if two drops, then the uh, plant will be successfully shut down. So what will be the failure criteria? Failure criteria will be up to two failure, it's okay. But if third failure, that means three devices all at once, if they fail um, and you know very well now uh, by this time, uh, it could be independent or it could be common cause. If three devices are failing, uh, design of reactor, they uh, take care of, uh, you know, avoiding common cause component. But then if uh, three devices fail, the chances are that there are some connecting mechanism, coupling mechanism, which are leading to failure of this device. And as far as common cause failure is concerned, concern, instant of failure is more important. If the devices are failing, three devices are failing at different times, then uh, it is not a, any warning for common cause failure. But if the 
uh, all the three devices are failing at the same time either because of independent or it is because of a common cause failure uh, then the then so the failure criteria here will be 3 out of 7 please get this point right if 2 is the success criteria then 3 out of 7 becomes the failure criteria because third device also becomes part of the failure okay so we have here so if you understood this then let's go to the mathematical modeling now our plant record we collected data or if you can obtain from generic data also because if the plant is in design stage you won't get this data so you have to use data from the similar plant somewhere you know so let us say I assume because this is a shutdown device and it is very important for me to collect the, uh, use the plant specific data in my risk modeling. So let us say the number of shutdown devices you know it was 7 years and I have used 10 years of data and total number of demand. Total number of demands is there were 2000 demand in 10 years to shut down the plant it is like this and in every demand all the 7 rods have to, have to drop and bring the system to safe state or shutdown state total number of device failure but in this we have seen two devices have failed they are at independent time one was during certain year x month other was during certain years y months so number of total accumulated drop is become uh, is uh, 14,000 uh, 14, and failures are two that means in 10 years we have only witnessed uh, two failure this is the characteristic of the safety system that their failures are very very low uh, and that's how they qualify to become safety system. Now the failure probability for individual device it comes out to be 1.43 into 10 to minus 4 and now the success probability if you say it is 0.99 1 minus p that is uh, 0.99. So we got the fundamental figure for individual device performance okay. Now let us go how what we do so this is a k out of n model here okay. The probability of failure given k device that is k is 3 here and number of uh, uh, number of total number of devices and what is the p probability okay and this com comes from this model probability of failure given this condition uh, and i told you what is the uh, uh, meaning of k is the uh, device number of minimal device required for failure and n is the total number of device then p is the, so no, p is the probability that we have here for individual device so this is a so it is read like this k k out of n device failure given probability of failure is k that is 3 1 minus p that is success probability n minus k means 3 minus 7 means 4 so with this formulation we will get so value of n is equal to 7 k is equal to 3 p is equal to 1.43 times 1 is 4 and this is how we estimate the failure probability is coming as 1.02 into 10 to minus 10. I can tell you this is going in hypothetical domain. But then we have used very conservative, uh, conservative uh, we have very uh, optimistic data also for this. So now let us say, but it may not be all that optimistic. Same devices they have been, they have showed that performance. In 40 years, they have, they have not failed. So let us go by this example uh, per se without uh, being judgmental on this subject. So common cause failure probability, let us say again uh, alpha factor, uh, beta factor is equal to 0 0.1. Okay. Uh, independent failure probability, we know that for 1.43 into and now 0 0.1 of uh, point of 0 0.1 of this figure is equal to 1.43 into 10 to minus 5. Now you see the shutdown system failure probability is 1.02 10 that is independent failure and this is a common cause failure so you can see the common cause failure is dominating and if we go by only uh, individual component failure then the results were very optimistic so uh, if uh, any uh, input i am giving you to to you uh, uh, dear uh, friends uh, please uh, please uh, use uh, the very intimate aspects in risk modeling uh, one consideration of common cause failure two human factor modeling that we will discuss in the uh, uh, next slides and use domain knowledge domain knowledge or domain experts are key to the quality of the uh, quality of the uh, risk analysis program that we have actually now uh, let us see uh, 
this uh, how what we have covered in this talk uh, we have talked about uh, earlier we had discussed in previous lecture series system uh, now we have discussed parallel system then uh, complex system of course complex system parallel system uh, one example i have uh, chosen for you for home study and do the modeling k out of n system which i discussed in my previous uh, few slides and implication of common cause failure Uh, considerations you know uh, in our um, modeling uh, with the, with the, uh, it is a, especially for parallel system n k out of n system so with this i think our we have one more uh, method we, is there uh, we'll discuss in the next uh, talk uh, that is uh, marco modeling also